Welcome to Watches with Dennis, and today I am reviewing the Baltic Aquascath Bronze Brown. This watch is for my personal collection. It was purchased new, and I've owned it about a week at this point. Baltic is a relatively young micro brand, and this is, I believe, their third version of a bronze watch that they have come out with. And so let's go ahead and get some specifications out of the way. According to my calipers, I get 39.3 millimeters in diameter. I get 46.8 millimeters lug to lug. I get a watch thickness of 13.1 millimeters, and I get 20 millimeters lug to lug. This watch offers 200 meters of water resistance. The watch case is made of bronze, specifically the copper aluminum alloy CUAL8. The crown is signed, and the watch has three positions for this crown. In position zero, the crown is screwed down and maximum water resistance is achieved. We unscrew that, it will pop out into position one, which is where the watch can be hand wound. In position two, the watch is in hacking mode, so the seconds hand stops moving, and we can set the time. Screwing the crown back in isn't particularly comfortable, in part due to the sharpness of the crown and the pressure needed for this step, whereas it is perfectly comfortable to wind and set the time. Baltic has gone with a brown fume dial, which starts lightest at the center and transitions to black as you approach the chapter ring. Arabic hour markers are at the 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock positions, with the remaining hours marked out with circles. And each minute is reflected with an indice closer to the edge of the dial. The bezel insert is sapphire and is black, and I think this complements the Fume dial transition really well, and also I think the black sapphire provides a nice visual contrast to the bronze casework. The bezel does offer good unidirectional action with minimal backplay. All of the markings are in a warm beige. The bezel markings, all the hour markings, and the hands, including the lollipop seconds hand, do feature loom. I normally find this beige Fotina look off-putting in an artificially vintage way, but in some instances, such as on this watch, I do think it works because it complements the watch's colors rather than existing solely for the sake of looking old. But your mileage may vary on that. Towards the 12 o'clock position, you can see the Baltic brand name, and then above the six o'clock position is the label that this is an Aquascaf watch and the 200 meters of water resistance. Given that the watch features Super Luminova, here is some footage of that loom freshly charged. This watch features a closed case back, which is in steel, likely to prevent skin irritation or discoloration to the back of the hand had it been made in bronze. Under this case back rests the Miyota Caliber 9039. This is an automatic movement wound via a unidirectional rotor. It beats at 4 hertz, has 24 joules, and offers approximately 42 hours of power reserve. Miyota claims an accuracy of minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day. Putting this watch on my time grapher, I get an average across all six positions I tested of plus 4.67 seconds per day. My range of readings were minus 4 seconds per day to plus 13 seconds per day. Here you can see what the watch looks like on my wrist. My wrist size is approximately 6.75 inches. I would say the black tropic rubber strap is the biggest letdown of the watch. I like the look, but it feels cheap. It doesn't wear the best. The taper here at the end of the strap lets it wiggle around a lot in the keeper, so it doesn't look balanced there. And the strap also came with a very sweet smell, which isn't offensive per se, but it is borderline cloying, and it has not faded fast enough for my liking. I will say the unidirectional rotor, while I can sort of feel it spin when I've been handling the watch, when it's on my wrist, I don't notice it. It's not nearly as pronounced as, say, what I can feel with an Orient Cano or what I've seen with even a Grand Seiko spring drive watch. So if you're bothered by rotor wobble, I don't think this one has a noteworthy amount for you to be concerned with. So what are my overall thoughts on this watch? I'd say the positives are I think the dial is very well balanced. I find the watch to have very comfortable dimensions for wearing, and I think it has pretty good bezel action. And two negatives I'd point out are, I think the crown is too sharp, and the strap is quite cheap. 
This watch is currently 625 euros on Baltic's website. Overall, I think this is a good watch to consider if you're interested in a bronze watch and favor the aluminum alloy variants. My negatives are relatively minor. The strap is understandable for the price point. I don't have a lot of Tropic strap experience, and so far I've yet to find one I really like to wear, though I do like the visuals, including on this one. If a micro brand is going to save money somewhere, I'm glad it is the strap. The crown negative is a bit more disappointing. When I first got this watch, my crown was very hard to screw back down. It would feel like I had it in place, and then it would spin a bit more when I applied force. I hit the threads with a toothbrush, and there must have been some debris contaminating that because it got considerably easier to screw down after I finished lightly brushing it. I'd say the effect is about on par now when I try and screw it down with what I've experienced with the Orient Cano, which is another inexpensive watch. But this one overall is less pleasant than the Orient because the crown is sharper, so there's more pain actually involved with trying to get it screwed down. Repeated testing of the screw down aspect actually caused my thumb to hurt. So overall, I do have to say this is one of the worst screw down comfort levels I've ever experienced on any watch that I have ever reviewed on this channel. The crown use for hand winding and time setting is fine, and it was fine before I even brushed the threads, which isn't surprising since they weren't in play during those aspects of using the watch. It's just really focused on screwing the crown back in. It's not a deal breaker, but for me, it is a disappointment. Overall, the rest of the watch are just positive aspects. I think this vintage throwback look looks extremely well done. And from the bezel to the Fume dial to the handset, I think Baltic really nailed the aesthetic. I think it all complements the bronze case quite well. The bezel feels a lot better than other dive watches I've tried around this price point. The Orient Cano I've referenced a few times, granted that is several hundred dollars cheaper, but a much more inferior bezel experience than what I have here on this Baltic. I think this actually plays a lot more like a higher-end dive watch, or at least the few that I have handled. But anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this review video. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like as it helps the channel out. Subscribe if you'd like to be automatically notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.